I know this has been talked about. It's been on the drawing board. There is a Super League around the corner. And whether the supporters like it or whether they don't, it is on the horizon. It is coming. And it's, and it's not a long way away. They've already got the Champions League, so it's just to carry on from that, but with 38 games. But United wouldn't play in, United wouldn't play in the EPL. They'd be playing in the Super League, in the European Super League. Like it or not, Project Big Picture has focused our attention on the future of English football. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer weighed in today by declaring Manchester United have a responsibility to protect the football pyramid. Former teammate Gary Neville is lobbying the government to set up an independent regulator to tackle football's financial crisis. A dozen clubs are in danger of going bust before Christmas. This all follows the failed attempt by the American owners of Manchester United and Liverpool to hijack control of the Premier League. When the Glazers and John Henry led a big six grab for power, attempting to scrap one club, one vote, it was firmly blocked. But changes are inevitable if the football pyramid is going to survive. And once again, it's a squabble over broadcasting rights that's going to be central to the whole debate. This weekend, United's game at Newcastle is the Premier League's first ever pay-per-view match. In my view, it's the fight for control of pay-per-view that motivates the foreign billionaire owners. And I'll speak more about that next time. Meantime, the other big target for the Big Six is the prospect of an enlarged Champions League. But do the elite clubs really want to play in both the Premier League and a European Super League? Coming up, some fascinating views from Gordon Hill. Our former Manchester United hero believes a European Super League is very much on the cards and could take our elite clubs out of the Premier League. I know this has been talked about. It's been on the drawing board. There is a Super League around the corner. And whether the supporters like it or whether they don't, it is on the horizon. It is coming and it's and it's not a long way away. It is it and I've seen football change in the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And I can tell you that it's changed. Number one is the pay-per-view, which you know all about. TV broadcasting, you know that all about. The, the, the TV companies now that tell you when you're going to play your game, what time you're going to play your game. I played in the first Sunday football match, Millwall versus Fulham at, at Craven Cottage at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. And it was, a, and, and I, you look at it and then you go, wow, I wonder if there's going to be more. And then there was more. And then there was more. EPL can be protected. EPL still run itself. Exactly the same. But if United and Liverpool or somebody else wants to go, they then have to look at it. But it's it's like you said, the rest of the Europe will look at it and say, wow, this is a brand new league and this is what it's got. They've already got the Champions League, so it's just to carry on from that, but with 38 games. But United wouldn't play in... United wouldn't play in the EPL. They'd be playing in the Super League, in the European Super League. All they're doing is saying, OK, we want to go on our own. All right, OK, fine. You go on your own. So you, you, you've created a Super League for all these teams. And then it, what it does, it keeps everybody looking, feeling, supporting their teams, plus their countries. Because at the moment we have so many foreign nationalities playing in the Premier League, we might as well open up to say, well, let's play home and away in their countries. Those clubs would love it. And there could be a relegation if the, if the, if the top two teams do not do it in the Super League, they should be then allowed to go back into their appropriate leagues in their countries. It sounds like you've worked it all out, Gordon. And uh, there's obviously many different permutations. But are you basically saying that you're in favour, really, of basically globalising football as long as it preserves the local leagues as well, such as the Premier League? Is that, is that kind of what you're saying? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. 
you still got your EPL. If you win the EPL, you should get a chance to be able to play in the Super League. That means you're playing every week against the Juventuses, the Barcelonas, the Bayern Munichs, home and away, to see who would actually, then you'd be actually getting all the players to be playing and you'd keep players happy because number one is they want to play at the best. There's only one place to go further than that, John, and that is the World Cup. And that's what you do with your country. So I'm saying in one sense, if they're going to do it like that, by all means, yes, I'm in favour of that. I'm not in favour of the top six taking over and saying they, they, they don't want this and they don't want that. I think it's got to be it's got to be all in or nobody in. It's a, it's a, and it's and this is not going to this has got to be um, described to uh, this has got to be proposed to all the other countries that will form and make up that new new European Super League. And if it was to do that, and Man United went, and Liverpool went, or Chelsea went, or Arsenal went, so be it. They are playing what we call the European Super League, which everybody everybody's been looking at. If you think about it, your your match congestion would be a sight lot less. The quality would be on the Super League, and winning that, they would be playing against the Bayern Munich. They'll be playing against the AC Milan. Whoever's in the Super Cup in the Super League would be their bread and butter every week. That's what they're there to pay. Because at the moment, we've got so many foreign players, those foreign players would love to win the Super League. You know, to be the top the top domestic league would be the EPL, First Division, Second Division. But the Super League would be the Europa League, which would be the pinnacle. And then on top of that, you just have the World Cup, which every four years... And and it'll, it'll still stay the same. You still have clubs developing players to be sold, and you and and if you if you've got three or four super clubs, you they'll be looking at players from 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 their nas from their country to see who could who they could buy to go into the Super League. But you still be developing in the EPL first division, second division. But, the, but what they've got to do is they've got to form some type of structure that, that, it, that because of this virus, it's financially killing everybody. Get over this hurdle. Let's, let's get this out of the way. And then if you're going to do it, do it on a serious basis. United may not have a very, very powerful team at this moment in time, but they're very powerful in the terms of the financial world. They're very and those and you could you could say well okay fine your supporters would be traveling to 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 uh, Juventus one week away game and then they're play, playing at Old Trafford the following week you still kept everybody wanting to get promotion but you've evened it out more you've spread it out more you've said yes we know the power teams want to go into this Super League fine then. Go into the Super League, but leave the EPL alone. Let the other teams stay and earn their revenue that way because you still have your BBCs and your ITVs and your BTs wanting to cover it and pay. And it, and each and the EPL will still be the same, but now you'd have every TV company in the world wanting to cover the Super League. You'd keep, you'd keep a lot more people happy in my eyes, but can it be sorted out, John? That's, you know, I put a lot of thought to it and I just obviously, said... Obviously put a lot of thought to it, but it sounds like we've got this situation in England at the moment where a lot of, well, 72 football clubs in the Football League and they say that within by the end of the season, they'll have lost a combined £250 million, which is where the figures come from because... Yes. It's bigger that they wanted to give as an upfront payment. It was basically to get all these clubs out of jail. But the reality is we've got clubs that are spending more money than what they earn and they're not getting enough out of the Premier League pot. So this this proposal, maybe it's probably been, it's been jumped the gun a little bit because it's come out before they wanted it to come out and they weren't ready. Yep. They haven't discussed it properly. But the reality is that 
for me, there's, there's lots of different layers to this story. You've got, for me, you've got the story where you've got Man United and you've got Liverpool and the other big six clubs who want to control their own global broadcasting rights. They want to have pay-per-view because they know that they've got the big audiences. They can make lots of money from pay-per-view. And the biggest two English clubs worldwide by a long distance is Man United and Liverpool. So they can make a lot of money from pay-per-view, which is why they're the two teams behind it, of course. Yeah, now, of course. The thing is, you you kind of jumped away ahead, really, because you're talking about an EPL situation and also a European league, which we've not talked about yet. <laughs> and I think that's probably what we're all heading towards. But you've all, you're, you're already looking forward to what we're getting ready for, potentially, by them trying to slim down the Premier League. So what I'm trying to get clear in my mind, do you see Man United and Liverpool and the other big six clubs playing in the Premier League and also playing in a European league? And does that mean there's no more Champions League? Are we talking about a Champions League, a Premier League and a European League? What, what do you see as the, the perfect model? It's a, a, that's a very good question because you've got the Champions League that is, but is, is do you take the Champions League out now that you've got the Super League or do you still have that, that, that trophy going for domestic clubs, the domestic leagues? At the moment, our domestic leagues um, uh, have got four divisions, the Premiership, They've got every the, the the team that seems to seems to seems to have the most most money seems to be seems to want to dominate what's happening and and they want to dominate at this moment they want to dominate the scene and well we do this and we've got twenty million more people watching us as this so we want a bigger slice of the action we were saying well okay fine. If you do that, then basically you've got to leave the other. The the EPL stays the same, but the Super League is is constructed as a brand new Super League. It's a, it's it's going to come, and if they took it up as a Super League, you'd still be able to have your domestic uh, domestic leagues playing in their uh, said competitions. The FA Cup, they could have the FA Cup still. But you've got the Super Leagues there that are really going for the Super Cup. We have it at this moment. So what you're creating is you're creating the same scenario with four divisions, uh, second, first uh, championship, Premier League, and then you've got your Super League. So you're not all you're doing is adding one very powerful league at the top for the powerful that want to be there. Only a few years ago, Rangers and Celtic were asked about going into the EPL. And that was shelved from the Scottish Football Association, which said no, no. But if you actually pose them that the Super League there and they get a chance, I, I, I think with the, with the rewards, the money and the power, I think you'd get clubs wanting to go into it, uh, especially the Uniteds and the Liverpools and maybe the Arsenals and Chelsea's. I can guarantee you that um, uh, uh, um, the Chelsea owner would go into it, you know, because that's what he's put all his money in to win the Champions League. That's what the Arsenal have done. That's what Liverpool have done. That's what Man United have done. You know, everybody says, yeah, what's been taking, what's been taking precedence at the moment is Champions League. Why are we seeing the demise of the League Cup? They feel it's, it's pointless. The FA Cup's now been degraded. How can that be degraded as the most, most, most talked about domestic trophy in the world? But now it's been degraded. And everybody says the Champions League, the Champions League, the Champions League. Well, to me, I, don't, I think if there's going to be a Champions League, there should be a proper league and let those teams. I would support Liverpool in that to win it. Of course I would. After we beat them in the FA Cup final, I made a point of saying to him, I wish you all the very best when you go to play. I think it was um, Mooch and Gladbach. I was very, I was very much in favour of them beating them. Why? You know, you ask everybody why. You might not like Liverpool in the domestic world. But when it comes to the European scene, you want to stand up and be counted. And, and that's how I feel now. I feel if, if, like Man United, if there was a Super League, if Man United or Liverpool was in it, I'd want them to win it. And then in team that goes into Europe now, whether it's Tottenham or I want them to win it. I want them to win it because it's, it's, it's English clubs. 
You come from a more gentlemanly era, though, Gordon. I think a lot of football fans these days they they hate each other. I mean, you won't get many Man United fans supporting Liverpool in any competition, and vice versa. Oh, but that's, the way, that's the way the world has changed. Yes, I, I totally agree. You know, there's a time when I mean, look, I come from I come from one of the most vicious clubs in the world where it comes to like a few Millwall. You know, the, the it, in the in the era that I was there, that they're lovely people, but they they die for the club. There, uh, there are clubs all over the country that would die for their club. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, is that we have so much separation in the game. But I tell you what, if I saw a game and I, I would want Arsenal to win. I'd want Chelsea to win if they were playing in Europe. That's just where I come from. That's only my opinion. You know, so I'm not, I'm not saying everybody's got to think that and, oh, we'd hate, we'd, we wouldn't want Liverpool to do that. I wouldn't say that at all. But I, I, I certainly, I can certainly see where English football is going to be going and, the, and the English football clubs are, are going to take it because they're getting more powerful. And I think this, this virus has really, really opened the door up for people to see that because... We didn't know which clubs owed money. We didn't know which clubs went into debt. We didn't know which clubs were going to pack up, John. But this this virus has opened the doors up that they've had to come out and say, we can't function anymore. You've taken away our livelihood. You've, uh, or our livelihood are our supporters, are our fans. And they're not there now. They can't be allowed in. How are we going to get finances? You know, if we pay, and, and the only other day they said, if we pay, play one game, we have to play, we have to pay our players all season if, we, if they play just one game. John, that's, that's, that's suicide. Yeah, but the reason that we're losing, the reason that the football clubs are losing this money is because we're not getting fans into the stadium. So that's kind of the key thing, isn't it, really? Because mm -hmm. once we get fans coming back into the stadium, Hopefully, money will start coming back into the game. Yes. But even if you look at the Premier League, I think they're projected that the Premier League, just the Premier League, will lose a billion pounds. I know. In lost revenue from in lost not revenue and lost, in lost supporters. Yes. Which is and probably that, another reason I'm looking at the pay per view because while we're sitting, while we're sitting watching these matches with no people in them, it's a way of getting some revenue in. So, you know, it it makes sense in a way that they're doing the pay per view to try and get some extra money in, but. I think it's sad because I think they could have let fans back into the stadium and that's what a lot of football clubs feel hard done by, really, because they've made a lot of efforts to try and get the stadiums yes. in a situation yes. where they can let fans in. But by having the doors basically shut firm, it's kind of, well, one, it's pushed a lot of clubs into the brink and it's also, and also made... And also, John, is, is that to, get, to let a 1,000 fans back in would cost the, the club more money on security and everything else than they would make. So it's got to be worked out where a club would make money and, and say, well, OK, fine. Um, Germany are a gold star in it. We've seen that. They, they've actually got people back in. They've got it. So why, don't, why can't we follow something like that and, and, and do that? Because I, I just scratch my head with saying that we've got common sense. We, we've, we should be able to let the supporters come back in, but not that it costs the club money, but the, the club can actually make money. You know, uh, what is the what is the size of the crowd that would be able to like make a club make some money? I was at Northwich when there, there was no money. I was at Chester when I could give you, I tell you what, it was heartbreaking for me. I had to use the youth team money to pay for the first team wages to play on a Saturday at Chester City. No, nobody knows exactly what you actually go through, you know, and I went through it as a, like a two-year apprenticeship of being a common manager with no money, no nothing, being able to get people, uh, the council coming in and, and finding out if your desk is worth more so they could reclaim some of the money. I, pay in, I, I, was, paying I was paying the electrical bill at Chester with cash, and that was the receipts from the programme money on a Saturday. 
and play and pay and pay and pay and, you know wages to players when their checks bounced and paying them on a Saturday before to get a result and to go out and ask your team to perform. Chester's a great little club, always has been, but you can only do so much with it. So I do agree with you on, yes, I think there should be a lot more. I think the Premiership should have looked after the smaller clubs better than what they have and stop being greedy.